Like any proper expedition, it began before the beginning. The plans, the maps, the logistics, the gear, the practice and training, the team. To the sponsors, we say things like epic, wild, awesome. These words have become too common. They barely even have any meaning anymore. Carelessly tossed around like a cafeteria potato salad. We try other combinations, but they all fall short. So we try it in French. Vol biv. Vol, fly, biv, camp. Simple. A highly engineered piece of fabric, some impossibly skinny lines, a harness big enough to hold some emergency gear, food and water, a radio, a GPS, a vario, a sleeping bag in a mountain range in California that stretches over 800 kilometers, and a few knuckleheads who think it's possible. Because we have no motor, Mother Nature is our friend or foe. Our success or failure rides on the wind and thermals and good or bad decisions. On day one, she is our foe and we cannot fly. Fair waiting, we call it. We're pilots. We've all been here many times before. We visit a school in Lone Pine, population 2035. Big for around here. We teach the kids about what we do, try unsuccessfully to teach them why. For lunch, the cafeteria is serving a low-grade antibiotic-laced beef burger on a Wonder Bread, previously frozen, bleached white bun. Ketchup is the vegetable du jour, the Americana. But despite the lack of nutrition and heavy dose of refined sugar, the kids are curious, attentive, excited about the breaking routine. They touch our gear and squeal at the videos, and one boy asks, have any of us ever landed in a tree? Five or six hands go up. There are those that have and those that will. My time will come. One little girl asks for our autographs, tells us she's going to become a pilot too. Welcome to the fringe, my dear. At 18,000 feet, where exposed skin becomes frostbitten in a few minutes and the air is so thin our minds function at a fraction of their capacity, where clear thinking is impossible, we feel like gods. It's a drug, an addiction. It keeps calling you back. You can never get enough. Until that one day you get so scared you can't do it again. Or you get so hurt you can't do it again. Or maybe you don't even get that lucky. None of us think it'll happen. Not to me. We might be right. We've each got thousands of hours up here in this world where we're not supposed to be. But the odds, the odds. We've given ourselves 30 days to complete the task, across the Sierra Mountains from south to north and make the Oregon border in a long series of connected flights. Bivol, fly, camp. Launch high, fly high, land high. Make camp, light a fire, cook some noodles, hydrate and laugh with your friends. Wonder at the craziness of it all. Repeat for as long as we can. I don't know the guys on the team very well, but I don't need to. In the sky, you're on your own. Other pilots just make it easier. Like birds or clouds or smoke, we provide an extra visual cue to our invisible world. Air, rising or falling. Find the rising air, keep going. Simple. A lot of people call us crazy. Maybe we are, but we're also afraid. Afraid of life on the ground, afraid of routine. Afraid of the crap and distractions our minds seem to hold dear when we're not in the air. People have to meditate for years to become present. All we have to do is launch. Escaping gravity, escaping reality, or maybe living it. This thing we do, it isn't for everyone. It appeals to many, but works for few, even though the dream of flight resides in most of us. Too few to even have proper statistics, I'm told. But some say the paragliding is right up there with base jumping and commercial fishing in the Bering Sea. It kills a few, hurts many. So why? Why do we take to the air, going places, traveling, risking so much? The answer is here. And here. Each time each of us sees these photos, it will remind us of when we chase something that had never been done. Something absurd. Then it worked.